So, after I've uh, uh, described uh, in the last video basically uh, why we can say that uh, if we are in thermodynamically reversible condition, we have the maximum useful work. This is that situation in which uh, uh, the entropics um, concerned, the entropics contributed, we need to pay to the universe is minimum. So the energy and in general the accidental works is really pure, is the minimum. Whereas the useful work, uh, the work that we can use in order to promote an action, discharging on the resistance is maximum. So now what we need to do is proceed with a mathematical resolution, we will see now how, in order to solve in a more precise way this function, that it represents the final aim of the thermodynamics in electrochemistry. And the solved function uh, and correlating the free energy with respect the potential, it will be, we will see this, the starting point for the NERST equation, uh, for the resolutions of the NERST equations, and so the pool B diagrams, and so on. Now, let's start to consider our cell. So we are imagining to have a cell. Okay, it could be maybe the same cell uh, the metal A or cell discussed during uh, the last video, so zinc uh, and oxygen, or a general type of cell. And we have our resistance here. And now we are imagining, as previously done, to uh, ensure a proceeding of the reaction in an infinitesimally slow way. In which way? with a resistance that is good to infinite. We can even imagine to obtain the same result uh, trying to applying uh, an oppositional potential due to the presence of an electrolyzer, uh, but it's more simple to look at this uh, uh, model in this way. So we have that the circuit is actually uh, closed, but is behaving as uh, it would be uh, open. So basically, we are in open circuit condition. And we know very well that when we are in open circuit condition, so in thermodynamic reversible condition, we have the minimum entropics contribute and we have the maximum useful work. So we have the maximum useful work and at the same time the minimum accidental work. So, in this case, with this surrounding condition, this lead to this one, we can say that uh, the total work is equal to the sum of the useful work plus the accidental work. And since we are in thermodynamics reversible condition, it's quite obvious that this it will be maximum and this it will be minimum. So now, in according with the first thermodynamic principle, we know that view the internal energy is equal to the derivative of uh, uh, heat is, minus the work. In this case, the heat is the heat in reversible condition. And so for this reason, we know in according with the Clausius equation that this is equal to T dS. So the temperature for the derivatives of the entropy. And so we can substitute this result here, and we have that the internal energy is equal to uh, T dS minus what? Minus the work. But the work is composed as the sum of the useful work, and this in, in this case is maximum, and the accidental work. Okay, 
we are now here and this point what we can say is recall the Gibbs Hammond's equation so we know that the Gibbs Hammond's equation tell us the relationship between the enthalpy the entropy and the free energy of Gibbs and in particular from an infinitesimal point of view is equal to this one okay now what we can say let me cancel here in order to have more space is that the sp in this case is equal to p is equal to u or p so internal energy the pressure and the volume and from the infinitesimal point of view is equal to du plus pdv plus uh, vdp but we know that literally basically du is equal to ds and so we can say that ds is equal to tds minus dlu minus pdv plus pdv plus vdp and now we can even introduce uh, this two uh, part so basically we are introducing this equation inside here so this is substituted here and we can see that dg is equal to this plus the remaining component pdx minus sdt and so this is negligible because it's simplified with this one and the same for what concerns this and for what concerns this and in this case the remaining terms are this for work VDP and SDT but if we are imagine now to consider a system that is in isobar condition and in isothermal condition so it's isothermal since the temperature is constant and it's isobar since the pressure is constant but we know that the derivative of something that is uh, a constant is literally zero and so this is negligible too and this is negligible too and so what, is, uh, what does it mean? that the final result is basically that dg is equal to minus dLU so we have a relationship between the useful work and the free energy this is the same result that we have obtained in the previously seen video in the last video and it is extremely true because uh, the negative sense is important why? because it means uh, that uh, when the reaction is proceeding so the discharging of the battery is occurring uh, we are decreasing the free energy of the reagent so the free energy of the state because the reagents are transformed into product and we are obtaining a more stable system so due to the development of the reaction the free energy decreases but at the same time if the free energy decreases the work, useful work increases the useful work increases because the reaction is proceeding and we are collecting work from the proceeding of this reaction and so the, main, the minus sense is extremely important so this is extremely important but now the useful work is not a, 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 cast, a random type of work it's a well precise work it's the electrical work due to the movement of electrons under the development of a, a chemical reaction it's the work on the resistance due to an electrochemical process and so in this case we can see that this that anything is equal to the Avogadro number for the elementary charge and the driving force that push electrons in uh, a certain direction the electric potential and this it represents the number of mole, the Avogadro number the number of species in one mole of substance taking consider about uh, the, the species that is uh, uh, responsible for the development of the reaction 
but it's important to understand that often the number of electrons uh, that are proceeding uh, through the external current are not always equal to the number of moles. For instance, in the case of zinc, we know that the oxidations of the zinc lead to the formations of two electrons for each single mole of zinc. And what does it mean? That we need to take in consider about this aspect. During the oxidations of the zinc, for instance, this is a zinc electrode, this is the chopper wire, and this is the electrolyte. We want to proceed the, produce the oxidation in order to promote a certain DDP of a battery. We are basically promoting the oxidation, we are releasing two electrons for each single mole of zinc that is oxidized with the creations of a, a cations with two plus as a value of charge. This means that uh, we need to weight this contribution. And so we need to write here before this value that could be collected in a constant known as Faraday constant equal to 96485 columns for mole of electrons, we can basically uh, take in consider about the difference between the electrons exchanging with respect to the number of moles. And so, before is important to introduce M that is equal to the mole. Of electrons with respect to the mole of substances. And so we have that G is equal to minus M F E. This is an energy per unit of mole, so joule on mole. This is mole of electrons over mole of substance, over mole of the species, in order to quantify the way in which the number of electrons is different with respect to the number, uh, the, the moles of the species releasing that electrons, we have the Faraday constant, column over mole of electrons, and we have the voltage. So, the voltage, the literature is equal to joule over column, because it is involved we have the simplification CR here, and we can appreciate how the results is basically the same. And this is one of the most important equations in thermodynamics for the electrochemistry. And we will see, it will be the starting point for the next equation development.